Well, I'm a vertebrate paleontologist and I spent a lot of my professional career wandering around Australia looking for the remains of animals with backbones, vertebrates, and hence vertebrate paleontology. But I'm interested in a particular suite of vertebrates, that is the marsupials, Australia's endemic mammal fauna. And uh, this mammal fauna uh, extends back for many, many millions of years. And in fact, we now have fossil remains from Australia that go back beyond 30 million years. The period of Earth history that I'm most fascinated with is the last part of Earth history, about the last 1.8 million years, which is known in geological terms as the Pleistocene period. And this is a time when humans spread across the surface of the globe. And paralleling that spread of humans across the surface of the globe went the extinction of many of the world's large mammals. And we all know about mammoths and mastodons and saber-toothed cats in the Northern Hemisphere. But what many people uh, are unaware of is that Australia also had a suite of giant mammals, the large extinct marsupials that are referred to as the megafauna, mega large fauna, the giant marsupials. And uh, these were a strange group of animals, um, many of which resembled wombats scaled up uh, to the size of a large steer. Animals like Diprotodon, which weighed in at around two to three tons. Um, its uh, cousin, Zygomaturus, probably about the size of a Jersey cow. Um, there was a whole suite of extinct leaf-eating kangaroos, rather unusual looking animals with a kangaroo-like body but an almost koala-like head to them. And other even rarer and stranger creatures like Palakestes, um, another marsupial that in many ways resembled a tapir in its body structure. And preying on these giant marsupials were large mammals like Thylacoleo, the marsupial lion, um, the Tasmanian tiger, the thylacine, and also some very large reptiles, the largest of which was a giant goanna called Megalania. A goanna that was about eight metres in length. A goanna that was much larger than even the fearsome Komodo dragon. These large animals disappeared from the Australian continent sometime in about the last hundred thousand years. And we're not quite sure exactly when they disappeared. Some people would claim that they'd all vanished by about 46,000 years Whereas other people working on sites elsewhere in Australia claim that these animals were still in existence up to 30,000 years ago. And this is where Burra becomes an important part of that jigsaw puzzle. I'm sitting in one of these eroded gullies here at a place called uh, Redcliffe out of Burra. And you can see the big red cliff in the background. And what we're looking at here there's a series of great alluvial fans and valley fills, um, material that has been swept off the eastern side of the Mount Lofty Ranges out across the Murray Plain. And these great alluvial fans have been cut into by a succession of streams and uh, filled with shallow water lakes. And this process has been going on for several million years. And in these stream channels and freshwater lakes, we find the remains of many of these large marsupials, particularly the remains of Diprotodon. Now there's a problem here if you're going to work out how old these Diprotodons are when they last roamed uh, this part of the Australian continent, because where we have stream channels cutting backwards and forwards across these sediments, they take skeletons of uh, dead animals and break the skeletons up and sweep their bones down the channel sediments and they get buried and then those channel sediments get reworked again in the next flood and the bones get swept out and moved on again and buried in the next suite of sediments. So simply dating the sediments that surround a piece of jaw or some teeth or a, or a limb bone of one of these large animals is only likely to tell you the age of the sediments and is not likely to tell you the age of the actual bone itself. we've found articulated skeletons of these big diprotodons. 
all of the vertebrae are still connected together. The limbs are still in association with the vertebral column. And when we find skeletons like that, we know that these animals cannot have been transported very far at all. And we can be confident that the sediments in which they are buried are contemporaneous with the animal itself. And when we find these sorts of sites, we can apply modern technology to understanding things about the ancient environment in which these animals lived. We can date the sediments by dating the quartz grains using optically stimulated luminescent dating. We can date the teeth of the animals by using electron spin resonance dating on the tooth enamel. We can date the specimens by pulling out snail shells or charcoal out of the sediments surrounding the carcasses and date those using carbon-14 dating. We can look at the isotopic uh, uh, ratios of carbon and nitrogen in the sediments to get an idea of the sort of vegetation that covered this area at the time these animals died. And so this is a very exciting little project. It is one piece in the big extinction jigsaw, but a very important piece. And the importance really hinges on the fact that we can find articulated skeletons.